Welcome to a special episode of Deep Tech 315, special in the sense that we're going to be focusing on Tesla. A couple big announcements uh, this week. One is a formal announcement. The other is reporting around potentially a change in their direction. And so we'll jump in with what caused the stock to be under pressure earlier in the week related to the delivers. I just want to give the quick setup. Rewind nine months ago, Elon was talking about compound growth rate of deliveries over the next decade or seven years at 50%. Uh, in the December 23 quarter, they grew deliveries at 20%. And the expectations for the March quarter started out at about 10% growth. And that declined to plus 2% just before the numbers came out. And those numbers came out and it was a meaningful miss to that delivery number. It was down 8%. Now, the company uh, gave three reasons for the miss on deliveries. Um, uh, before I get into those, I'll mention that uh, well, deliveries miss production was essentially in line. They produced 12% more vehicles than they delivered. And that's a unique dynamic. Usually you don't see that, that wide of a spread with Tesla production versus deliveries, but it's relevant because the three reasons that they gave, the first reason was that the switchover from the, to the new model three in Fremont caused some disruption. I find that a little bit hard to connect with the delivery numbers because they still produce more cars than what uh, what I would have expected. Second is the arson fire in Giga Berlin. Again, that would say that production would have slipped and we didn't see that. And the third, they talked about complications related to shipping in the Red Sea, which does make sense. But when you put all of this together, Doug, I'm going to let you go first here about kind of uh, assessing uh, the, the vortex of what's going on. And I'll give you a B and a C option here is that uh, we gave their their reasons. Uh, option A is you agree with their reasons. Option B, uh, how do you feel about the combination of uh, high interest rates impacting this, competition, uh, potentially uh, you know people holding off for, for something or uh, what other explanation? Maybe Elon's brand is somehow impacting sales in the U.S. So Putting all those three, those all these forces together, what do you attribute the softness to? I think I take option D, which is Occam's razor. I mean, the simplest explanation usually is one that's pretty powerful, and I think the simplest explanation is that consumer demand for EVs is just weak right now, and mm -hmm. uh, maybe getting weaker. Maybe this is just a signal it's getting weaker. I think you know the interest rate thing to me feels like an excuse. Every car manufacturer is dealing with the same interest rate environment. Um, and I don't think we're seeing misses, you know, from them on the uh, electric or sorry, the gas powered side. And so I, I think the simplest explanation is probably that. And I think that sometimes with this EV space, there there is a little bit more of a religious element to it, because there are believers who think the world should be fully electric. There are skeptics who say, I guess Gene raises his hand. There are skeptics that say that, you know, hey, gas is always going to have a place in the world, um, which I think is, is probably to some extent true. Now, it may be a very small place. Um, but for me, it comes down to a simple thing, which is what I've always said. I don't think an electric vehicle is 10x better than a gas car. Is it better? Yes. But when we think about technological paradigm shifts and vertical adoptions, Usually that happens when you do have a 10x better technology, iPhone versus Palm computers. Mm -hmm. iPhones are 10x better. And we saw the iPhone and the smartphone be adopted like that. And I think that that's the one thing that we do have to factor in here. I, I think EVs will probably be the majority of cars, but it's going to be this really long slope that may look linear. It may be bumpy sometimes. If we thought it was going to be the iPhone smartphone curve, I think that we were wrong. And I think we're kind of seeing that right now. Um, from my, that all makes sense. From my perspective, I think that there was more hype than I realized, more excitement that I realized a few years ago, and that probably pulled uh, forward some demand from people, maybe compressing the time and the the interval that they'd buy a car. It kind of pulled some demand forward. I'm sure that that had an impact on it. Agree with you largely. EVs are a little bit more expensive than gas cars, but in general, that's probably interest rate thing is is probably less of an impact. I don't think Elon's brand, I mean, there's people who love them, people who don't like them. I think that's probably more or less uh, a, a wash on on that front. 
Uh, but I do on the, the 10X thing, it's an important part of the conversation because I agree that electric cars are not 10X better. I don't own an electric car. Um, we're getting our home wired for two electric cars for our next cars. And, uh, but at the same time, I think when you put that combination in, uh, uh, in uh, that in combination with what can happen around autonomy, which kind of leads to the, the second part of the conversation here, I do think that it can be five, six, seven, eight, ten 10 times better. And eventually it's, isn't it, does it matter if it's 10 times better? If it's, even if it's three times better and you got to get a new car. Aren't you getting an electric in, in five, 10 years? I think eventually we'll probably get to a place where maybe it is three times better, but I think the reality is it's probably not three times better today. I think, I think that's just the timing question. You know, a lot right. of these adoption All cycles yep. do come down to timing. Do I think an electric car is like, I don't know, 1.2 times better? Yeah. One, but like we could debate how many times better but it with is. The time, once you but, start putting, uh, but, but, but the autonomy is not dependent it. on electric though. I think that's a false equivocation right. because you could have a gas car that's autonomous. It's just sensors. Yeah. I haven't seen any. I've wondered that. Why Why don't they have gas? Well, I think you have, like, for example, uh, Super Cruise, which is GM's Chevy's product, right? right? I mean, those are on Cadillacs that are, uh, I believe huh. some of them are gas powered. And that's not that's not level five. It's not level four. It's not the same as FSD, but it's a step toward that. Okay. And maybe, and just maybe as kind of a segue to our second topic here is that a few weeks ago, we have Tesla opening up the FSD beta for one month. The feedback's been really positive In, internally. Andrews tried it. He was skeptical. He tried it right when it came out a year and a half ago, tried it again, uh, had a lot of good things to say about it. So feels like that's moving in the right direction. Pretty bold bet for Tesla to go and throw this out there. We talked about it on a previous uh, episode here too, but that kind of leads into the second topic here, which is, uh, or what, what, what I just, uh, sorry, I'm going to go back and just get some quick uh, perspective on the numbers, how this all plays out for Tesla this year. When you start in the hole down 8% like this on deliveries, it's really hard to grow for the year. If they increase their deliveries by 10% per quarter, so absolute numbers increasing 10% sequentially each quarter, and they got a really tough comp in, in June too, you're going to end up the year down 2%. And so uh, this is not a 50% growth. The, my view when I saw this is that's okay because we're going to get to this cheaper model. Yes, we're going to be down 2% this year and the cheaper model really doesn't come out to 2026, but 2025, people start anticipating that. So we start kind of building. There's, there's another wave that we can look forward to this lower price vehicle. Well, that got smacked down with a Reuters story uh, today saying that uh, the, the company is going to uh, cancel redirect the Model 2, the cheaper $25,000 version, and focus on robo-taxi. And for those of you who've uh, read the Isaac's uh, biography on Musk, you'll know that this has been was a big debate. Do you do a Model 2? Do you do a robo-taxi? And the company had gone out and said that they're going to do the Model 2. And so um, from my perspective, uh, it's they're going after a different market uh, here with the robo-taxi. It feels like a pretty measurable shift in terms of the direction about where this mass market vehicle can come from. It's a really big bet, I think, number one. You think about uh, first place, at least my head goes, is, okay, if you're choosing between RoboTaxi and Model 2, you're talking about two products that have vastly different margin profiles, likely. A, mar a Model 2 would have been probably fairly low margin product. I mean, when you get into low end products like that, that's the nature of the game. Robo taxi, if it works, obviously that can be very high margin. And so you think about the long term potential of of Tesla. I don't know if you're in Elon's shoes and you say, if we think we could accelerate the reality of robo taxi by, you know, I don't know whatever timeline it is, it's, it's well past uh, several times he's promised that it would be out by now. But if you could bring that to market sooner, it does seem like it should have more of a long term positive impact on the ability of the business to do something truly unique and generate cash flow from it than a Model 2 would. So yeah. I don't like, I'm usually the Tesla skeptic or, or the uh, rational uh, perspective I'd like to say, but this feels, I think, like the right decision to me, even though it's a tough one. That's my sense too. It's a big decision. It was a surprise to me, but ultimately I had always kind of wondered like, why do that lower price car when if the end game was for a robo taxi, why not just rip the bandaid off? I mean, that's what they're doing with their electrification is the whole 
premise of the company is to rip the bandaid off. Why not do it when it comes to autonomy? And then I have this view like in the back of my head, maybe they're seeing something good that's happening with some of this preliminary data around FSD because a lot of more people are using it now than were a month and a half ago. And maybe that's given them some confidence. But the Reuters was kind of talking about the story uh, emerging inside of Tesla maybe around the beginning of March, which was before this FSD beta, that one month free beta uh, went to the existing Tesla owners. And so, but I, I agree. I think it's going to be viewed as yet another reason why Tesla is in this uh, difficult period and not seeing uh, clearly what the next couple of years for are going to look forward to. But ultimately, I think it's the right decision to go robo taxi. Um, I think w one last thought on the robo taxi, just, <laughs> just so we have the balanced opinion on it. Um, the one challenge they will have there, obviously, I think this is something that people will probably have to talk more about from a stock perspective is how does the government ultimately regulate this, right? And it's going to be on a state-by-state -state level. So you're kind of going into many different battlegrounds to try to get these approved. We've seen different things happening in California, right? With Cruz um, and Google's efforts in Arizona. And um, it, it will probably be slow. Like we're talking about timing right. and timelines for things. We should, um, if you are a Tesla bull, you should expect, obviously the government's not going to work fast just because it's Tesla. Um, but that might be one of the bigger bottlenecks. Yeah, right? it might it's be 2028 20, before 2030 yeah, before we see this. Yeah, the government's you know, willingness to move here, even if the product is ready. So that's that's one variable that I think is By really the way, important. Can, what, can't the federal government step in and understand it's uh, historically been done by states. They set their, uh, their the rules of the road for each laws. state. But, I mean, something like this, it feels like it's enough, more, yeah. more of a federal question. I, I think it's going to be state by state. Yeah, okay. the, the highway highway issues. But your message is, uh, be patient. It's not going to be twenty six. <laughs> yeah, the For government sure never works fast. fast. So, so yeah. yeah, hopefully, you know, hopefully, because I think it is, you know, a valuable product. I think it's it is a game changer. If if it can happen, as much rationality as I think we should look at Tesla with, you know, it would be a powerful product. You know, reduce the cost of transportation uh, well more than what Uber has done, right? Mm -hmm. um, and using vehicles that are just sitting unused, um, that would be a really powerful thing. Maybe reduce the cost of ownership, obviously, if you have a Tesla and you have a little money on it. So, I mean, there's a lot of really powerful things here that would be completely new um, that we don't see in the world right now. But again, the, you know, the government thing, I think, is going to be maybe even harder than the technology yeah. at this point. Good call. Yeah, I think that was going to be Apple's approach, too, is just go driverless from the beginning. Uh, I applaud the... Uh, kind of vision of the company to, to embrace that. I also applaud the vision or the patience of investors to kind of uh, wait, which will be years before we likely see anything. So, but it won't be years before our next deep tech. That will be next week on behalf of Doug and myself. Bye for now.